Can you make a video about the bio filter and elaborate on its function a little more, please? Woo! The school of aquaponics. So the biological filter has one primary function in aquaponics, and that is to neutralize the uh, toxicity of ammonia and nitrite. And this is done uh, through a process known as nitrification. As we feed our fish, the protein that's inside of the fish content is catabolized and then it's excreted through the fish gills, primarily uh, uh, in the form of unionized ammonia, NH3. That unionized ammonia, when it contacts the water, it's highly soluble and it reacts with the water and it forms NH4 plus ammonium. Now this form of ammonium is relatively non-toxic. The unionized ammonia is toxic. Now, depending on the pH, water temperature, and salinity, a portion of this ammonium ion is going to remain as free unionized ammonia. It's not going to be converted into the non-toxic ammonium. And this is where the issue comes in because we have to find a way to get rid of this unionized ammonia because it's in, in low concentrations, it's toxic to the fish. It doesn't take much of it for it to kill fish. Now, because the total amount of unionized ammonia, NH3, the gaseous toxic ammonia, is a percentage of the ammonium, the soluble ammonium in the solution, if we can figure out a way to minimize or eliminate the ammonium levels um, in the solution, then that will have a direct effect on the potential or, uh, amount of free ammonia that can be available in the solution. So here's an example. So let's say we have two milligrams of uh, total ammonia nitrogen um, inside of the system. You went out, took a reading, and uh, it, the results show that you had two milligrams per liter. And let's say that the temperature, the water temperature is 20 degrees Celsius and the pH is uh, seven. From this total ammonia nitrogen reading, about 0.4% uh, of that is going to be um, unionized ammonia, NH3 which would give you about 0.08 uh, milligrams per liter of free ammonia in the system. And the other 1.92 milligrams per liter would be ammonium, NH4+. Now, the free ammonia level in this, in this uh, system here would be acceptable for long-term exposure for uh, a great deal, um, a variety of fish. So this is fine. But what happens is, say if you this, the pH skyrockets up to 10, now 80% of that two milligrams per liter is now free ammonia. It's free ammonia now. So now we went from uh, a 0 0.08 milligrams per liter when we had it at a pH of seven, when we jumped up to 10, now we're at 1.6 milligrams per liter of ammonia, free ammonia. And this is would cause death to a lot of fish, depending on the species, uh, a lot of fish are going to bite the dust with, the, with, with, with these um, concentrations of ammonia. They're going to see the afterlife. And maybe the pH in your system won't jump to 10, but if you have more uh, 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 total ammonia concentration in your system, then it doesn't take much of a pH shift for the, uh, the, the free ammonia um, concentrations to be within a range that is deadly to the fish. So the goal... Um, in aquaponics is we want to eliminate any of these scenarios from happening uh, in the first place. We don't even want the potential for us to have, because we, we, we may have high amounts of uh, ammonium in the system, but one a, a pH shift or a temperature shift could drastically change that into deadly toxic uh, free ammonia in the system. So we don't even want that as an option. So what we need to do is get rid of the ammonia uh, or the ammonium as a whole, and there's two uh, methods that are primarily responsible for reducing the amount of ammonium inside of the system. One is plant root uptake. Plants are able to uptake ammonium in order to build up organic structures. Now, the problem with this is that this happens relatively slow in comparison to the amount of ammonia that's being produced um, if you have a properly sized system, which means you have the correct amount of fish to the amount of plants, to the amount of feed that you're inputting. Some of you guys out there are having uh, two fish in a thousand gallon tanks. Um, you're never going to build up concentrations of ammonia high enough to even have an impact at all. So this is referencing to correctly sized systems. Um, if you have that, then the amount of ammonia being produced is not going to be taken up fast enough 
um, by the plants in order to uh, uh, negate this problem. So we have to go to the second method. This is where the biological filtration comes into place. This is where we get into the meat and potatoes of it. So there's also microbes, nitrifying bacteria that are able to use ammonium in the presence of oxygen to obtain energy. And these bacteria are fairly efficient at um, utilizing this, um, uh, this compound. Now these bacteria, they colonize the surface areas of um, uh, all the surfaces pretty much inside of the, um, the system, whether it be on the, the, the tanks, whether it be in the hydroponic areas, um, wherever their surface area, uh, they, that's where they're gonna colonize. But typically, um, depending on the type of system you use, there's not enough surface area for the amount of uh, bacteria to colonize to be able to efficiently remove and oxidize the ammonia that's being produced by the fish. So what we do is we place a biological filter in our system. And what this does is it just pretty much creates an environment with large amounts of surface area that allow the uh, a sufficient amount of uh, bacteria to colonize and be able to efficiently remove ammonia. So basically it's just a, uh, uh, an area with large amounts of surface area using me different types of media um, to be able to house the quantity of uh, nitrifying bacteria needed to do the job of removing the ammonia out of the system. Now, once we have all of that uh, configured and we have our ammonia oxidizing bacteria that's uh, removing all of the ammonia out of the system, what happens as a byproduct is that ammonia is uh, then gets broken down and uh, that nitrogen source is converted into uh, a different form of nitrogen known as nitrite. And the problem with nitrite is that it is uh, uh, toxic as well to fish at certain concentrations. And plants aren't uh, efficient at removing this either. So luckily, nature has a, a sequence set in place that once the nitrite is present, then there's other nitrite oxidizing bacteria that are going to come and do the same thing that the ammonia oxidizing bacteria did for the ammonia. They're going to use that as a source of energy and they're gonna um, deplete that from the system. And once they end up utilizing that as their source of energy, they convert that nitrite into a relatively non-toxic form of uh, nitrogen known as nitrate. And this fish can dwell and they can swim and live in this uh, uh, form of nitrogen and up to high concentrations, up to high parts per million, 1,000 parts per million, certain fish can uh, live in with no effect. 1,500 parts per million, certain fish can live in with no effect. This form of nitrogen is what we want present in our system because it, because of the, uh, the non-toxic element that it uh, opposes to the system and also it's available to the plants and the plants can use that as their source of nitrogen. So now after a certain dispensation of time and you have a mature biological filter with the correct quantity of uh, nitrifying bacteria present, once you input feed in the system, boom, then the ammonia is being uh, released through the gills and through uh, uneaten food and decomposing organic matter and all variety of other things. Once that ammonia is being released, um, then that you have your biological filter that's ready to consume that very rapidly, very, very rapidly. And then you don't have to worry about any issues um, uh, uh, escalating from having excessive ammonia in your system. So this is the importance of having a biological filter in your system. Now, there are cases when you don't need a external biological filter. This mainly depends on the type of system that you're uh, operating. If you have a gravel uh, system, then that gravel inside of your system acts as a biological filter. So it's all in one component. So the nitrifying bacteria, the nitrification process is taking place right inside of the media that you have in that system. If you have a properly sized deep water culture system, correct fish ratios, correct plant density, uh, correct feeding rates, then the, uh, then, then the trough, the hydroponic trough, the sides of it, the bottom of it where you have your pond liner, all that is surface area for nitrifying bacteria to colonize. The underside of the polystyrene foam, the floating foam, that houses uh, beneficial bacteria, nitrifying bacteria. That is sufficient enough to, uh, uh, to, to, to oxidize the amount of ammonia that you're inputting in the system. So this is pretty much the breakdown on how the biological filter functions and its role and purpose in um, the aquaponics system. Um, there's a variety of methods that could be used for uh, biological filtration. And we may do a separate video uh, showing how to build um, one of the, um, the biological filters that, that we use. 
Um, but, it, you know, it just depends. Depends on how the aquaponic guy community is responding. So we'll, 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 we'll base it off of that. But this is pretty much the breakdown. Hopefully this helps you understand the biological filter uh, uh, function and the role of nitrification in aquaponics.